Tarek, drug maker Moderna recently showed some promising results from its vaccine trial. What did the early results show? Yeah. So yesterday, uh, Moderna released their phase one clinical trial for their COVID-19 vaccine. And this trial started back in March with 45 patients getting the vaccine. And with phase one clinical trials, there are basically two things we're looking for. So first and foremost, uh, the most important consideration in a phase one trial is to ensure the vaccine is safe and tolerable. And this is because with vaccines, the absolute last thing we want to do is put any patients in harm's way because here we're inoculating perfectly healthy individuals. And the good news here is the vaccine performed very well with no major uh, adverse events reported on the vaccine. Uh, the second thing we're looking for in a phase one trial is to get the first inklings of how effective the vaccine can potentially be. And here we got good news as well. So be it the low, medium, and high dose, on all three doses, uh, the vaccine was able to generate an immune response in the individuals that got vaccinated. Uh, so for instance, at the 25 microgram dose, um, uh, the individuals that got the vaccine were generating binding antibodies roughly in line to what recovered COVID-19 patients are producing. And at the 100 microgram dose, um, patients were actually producing even more antibodies than what your typical COVID-19 patient is uh, producing. So all in, despite it being a small sample size, uh, the strong response across the board is very promising for the vaccine. Now, I understand that Moderna is using a new sort of technology or approach to vaccine development. Can you tell us what it is and what are some of the benefits of this uh, approach? Yeah, so taking a step back, when it comes to developing vaccines, there are basically three main techniques that scientists use to make a vaccine. So the first is an inactivated viral vaccine. So this is basically the process we use uh, to make the annual flu shot, where we grow the virus before disabling them so they can't cause harm. Uh, the second technique is a recombinant vaccine. And this is where we genetically engineer other viruses to create a COVID-19 vaccine. And this is basically the approach uh, most companies are following. So J&J, uh, Sanofi, JSK, they're all looking at doing recombinant vaccines. Um, and last but not least, uh, the newest kit on the block are mRNA vaccines. And this is basically what Moderna is trying to do. And in fact, the technology is so new that we actually don't even have an mRNA vaccine on the market today. So this would actually be the first mRNA vaccine ever approved if it was successful. And the way it worked is that instead of delivering the antigen to your body uh, in a traditional vaccine, here we're basically delivering to the body the instruction manual uh, so that your body can produce uh, um, antibodies to, uh, to the virus. So we deliver those uh, instruction manual basically in a lipid nanoparticle. So this is basically a bubble of fat. Inside this bubble of fat, we put the mRNA code. The immune system reads that code. The, under, the immune system then understands what the uh, viral antigen looks like and then cascades a series of events uh, that allows your body to produce uh, the antibodies. And the, the beauty of this approach is that unlike a traditional vaccine, you don't need to grow any viruses in a lab. So you can develop this vaccine much more quickly. And importantly, you can also scale this vaccine quickly as well. So where do we go from here? What are the next steps? So for Moderna, the next step is to begin their phase two clinical trial. And they've gotten approval to fast track uh, the phase two trial with the FDA. And that trial is set to begin any day now. And unlike a phase one trial where we're mainly testing uh, for safety, with a phase two trial here, we're trying to get a better sense of effectiveness, as well as uh, tweak what the ultimate dose should be for a phase three trial. Um, so uh, Moderna for their phase two trial is enrolling 600 uh, patients versus just 45 patients in phase one. Um, and importantly, half of those patients now will be over 55 years of age versus young adults in phase one. And this is important because older individuals tend not to produce as strong of an immune response uh, to vaccines versus uh, young adults. So if Moderna is able to generate similar immune response in uh, older adults as they did in the phase one trial, and at the same time, if you don't get any uh, adverse events on a safety side, uh, this would actually bode very well for the vaccine um, and ultimate approval down the road. So Tarek, if all goes as planned, when can we expect a vaccine to be released? Yeah, so historically in the world of pharma, it's always dangerous to declare victory too early. 90% of drugs you know, fail clinical trials, 70% of vaccines also fail uh, trials. Uh, that said, the phase one data from Moderna suggests that the odds here are above average. Um, so a vaccine approval by the end of the fall 
is actually very much in the cards at the moment. Um, it's important to remember, though, that even if Moderna is successful in getting approval, it, it takes time for them to scale the vaccine and production. So as such, initial doses will likely be reserved for frontline healthcare workers, as well as high-risk individuals. Um, but as we roll into uh, 2021, Moderna expects that they can produce uh, 1 billion vaccines annually on an annual run rate. Um, and if you combine that with J&J, which is also looking to target a billion vaccines, um, if you look at Pfizer and BioNTech, they're also looking to produce hundreds of million of doses. Um, combined, we can actually have potentially uh, billions of doses by the end of, the next, of next year. Um, so at this point, I think it's, it's not a matter of if we defeat COVID-19, it's really just a matter of when we defeat COVID-19. And if mRNA is successful, that timeline can move uh, forward a few more months and, and that would be a great victory. Thank you very much for your time. Yeah, thanks, Anthony.